Hey, what's going on you guys? It is Thursday and that means it is time for another Overland Bound Bootcamp video. Today with Chris, we're going to be talking about scene safety, a scene leader and calling for help. So Chris is going to give you his take on that. The Bootcamp series is raw and uncut because we just want to get the information to you in as efficient a way as possible. We'll be talking to a number of subject matter experts in all topics related to overlanding. So stick around and check things out on Thursday. Now, this is the nuts and bolts of it today. We are learning how to be prepared overlanders, but the whole reason we do this is because adventure is necessary and you need it in your life. We want to go out there and experience the great outdoors, have that connection with nature and connect with a worldwide community. We would love to see you on the trail. If you have any questions, head on over there and check things out. Now let's check in with Chris and learn about scene safety. Enjoy the video. Welcome back to another episode of On Call with Chris. Yes, still on call. And I uh, thought today I would talk about scene safety, scene leader, calling for help. What do you really do when you come across an accident? Like what's really the first thing that you should process through your um, mind and, and figure out what you wanna do before you even get out of your rig or go to approach the patient? It's something that I think is important to discuss because there are rights and wrongs, things that you really should do and things that you really shouldn't do. And I think that when people are faced with these situations and they're not trained or haven't thought about it, they may tend to rush into it. And that actually is where you can get in trouble, um, not just harming the patient, but actually becoming a patient or a victim yourself. So I thought it's a topic that's uh, that's important. So. There you are, you're minding your own business, either driving down the road, driving down the trail, sitting at camp, and something happens, some bad situation occurs. Uh, it's usually gonna be traumatic. It could be isolated to a person who falls, or it could be uh, kind of a natural thing where a tree falls, or it could be a mechanical thing, like a chainsaw injury. That is the scene. When, when you come across somebody we call that the scene. It is not just the patient, but the environment that the patient is in, what is going on around them, what was the mechanism, how did they get hurt, is there potential for that to hurt more people, and how do you prevent any of that from happening, right? So to be honest, step one is scene safety. It is to make sure that before anybody goes in to help that patient, the scene is safe for people to go in. That's a really hard step for people to take that time to make sure that it's there. Uh, if there's a burning building, you obviously wanna run in and save somebody, but you may become a victim yourself. If there's a car that's rolled over and it's unstable and it's teetering, if you go to crawl under that car to pull that uh, victim out, you yourself may become a victim. So really that scene safety it has to be done quickly, obviously, in those situations, but you really need to make sure that you take that time to do it so that when you come to a scene, you need to make sure that there's a potential for a fire or a potential for a vehicle to continue to move or if a tree has fallen and the tree is not completely down, that it can move again. If there is somebody who got injured by a chainsaw and the chainsaw is still running, all of these things need to be considered before you really approach uh, the patient. So that gets into the scene leader as well because if you've got multiple people who are there and can help, somebody needs to be in charge. And, and you really, if you're the one who feels confident in doing it and you know what needs to be done, it's okay to tell someone, go turn off that car. Hey, go get me some logs to support that uh, car so it doesn't roll over on us. Can you turn off the chainsaw? Can you go get my kit so that you can assess the scene? Um, it, it helps if you are out with a group of people, especially people that you uh, maybe aren't as familiar with as Overland Bound meetups tend to be, that you have these conversations. Hey, wh what do you know how to do? Could you be the mechanic? Could you be the first aid person? Could you be the comms person? You know, Do you like to cook? Do you wanna cook? I mean, this is part of that community that we talk about that we, we wanna know what everybody's capable of so that when something happens, we know who to go to to ask for help. 
So if you're going on a long trip with a group of people you haven't met before, it's actually okay to just say, hey, what are you guys comfortable doing? If we have an accident, let's just use this, this example because it's the one we're talking about today, but what happens if there's an accident? Who knows first aid? Who has kits in their car? It's just a good way to know resources, just like not everybody necessarily needs to bring a chainsaw on a trip, right? If you bring one chainsaw, that's great. Maybe somebody can use that weight and space for extra fuel for the chainsaw. And if you know that everybody's got a first aid kit, then you know you can go to any rig to get one. If you know that only one rig has a first aid trauma kit, then that's the rig you need to go to. So you need to, this is this community part where we talk to each other and know what's going on. But when something happens, you need to be able to have somebody who's in charge because you need to make sure you have seen safety so that nobody else gets hurt. You need to make sure that the patient can be taken care of, whether they need to be moved out of the environment or the environment needs to be made safe. That's a tough decision sometimes too. Um, and the other one is calling for help. It's super important that in the back country, you decide how you are gonna get that person to help because nobody carries everything they need to do to take care of somebody who is seriously hurt. You can temporize and you can slow down bad things from happening, but you eventually need to get them to proper care. So is that going to be an evac where we drive them out or is that gonna be somebody comes to us? Those decisions need to be made pretty quickly. A lot of that will depend on the type of injury, where you are, and what who you have around training wise. Even if I'm out, I am quick to call for more help because as much gear as I carry and as many things as I know how to do, I know that my limitations are really where I am at in the environment and I don't have everything that really needs to be done. So when you come to a scene, please take the time to assess it. Make sure that the dangers are removed. And if you can't remove the dangers, you need to move the patient. And I know that people hear a lot about don't move someone who's fallen and they worry about you know spine injuries and neurologic injuries. To be honest, those are super rare. If they occur, they usually occur during the traumatic event. Uh, move, moving those patients doesn't usually make it worse. Um, <clears throat> and if, if the thing is that their car is on fire and it's upside down and it's not particularly stable and you're not going to be able to make it stable before the fire causes a problem, you need to get that person out. Whether you just drag them out and deal with whatever happens afterwards, is that's just a tough call, but that's what you need to do. So scene safety, think about it. That's what these videos are all about. I'm not here to teach you the formalities of it, I'm here to get your thought process going so that when you got a few minutes here and there, you can actually think about these things so that when you are actually faced with them, you it's not the first time you had to think about it. So please think about scene safety. Think about if you could be a scene leader and want to be a scene leader or may have to be and if you don't want to, what would you do? How are you gonna call for help? Look at the communications you have in your rigs where are you? Does somebody have satellite phone, satellite texter, SOS buttons, personal locator beacons? Um, everyone doesn't need to carry one as long as there's one and everybody knows how to use it or where it is. So there's, there's today's on call with Chris. Keep your scene safe. Make sure that nobody else gets hurt. Get the victim out of harm's way as soon as safely possible. Call for help. Call for help early. That's it. So again, I'm Elsa Lease on the forums, overlandbound.md on Instagram. If you've got questions, please reach out to me. Um, I, I really wanna make sure these videos are for you and that we answer the questions that you guys wanna know the answers to, or at least the topics that you wanna hear uh, discussed. So message me, put them on the forums, and uh, we'll see when I can get to the next one. Everyone take care. <laughs>